Hello. Today I'm going to talk about custom dynamic watt, which is solution when the off-the-shelf model doesn't fit. My name is Jenny Nett, and I have been with Phil Hour since September 2021. My job is primarily to educate on our products, but also to support customers on specific product selection. I have worked as a clinician since 2002 mostly in pedi pediatrics, but I also done uh, orthotics for adults. My main focus has been gait or sources. I have also worked with spinal bracing, mostly to position and stabilize. So why do we use dynamic walk? What is unique about dynamic walk is the flexibility of it. Many other drop foot orthosis work more like rigid AFOs. This can be something you want. Maybe you want to control the knee or correct your deformity. But if this is not required, restricting movement will not benefit the patient. Rigid AFOs will restrict everyday activities. Walking with a rigid AFO will make it more difficult to walk in uneven trains or drive a car. Some workouts can be almost impossible to perform with a stiff ankle, and walking in stairs is many times difficult. When you use a rigid AFO, shoe selection will also be very important. This is because the heel height of the shoe will influence the function of the device. Changing between different shoes with different heel heights will many times cause problems. So, to conclude, Unless you need to restrict movements, this is something you want to avoid. And this is really what dynamic walk does. It will allow natural movement of body segments and only compensate for the impairments. So exactly what does dynamic walk do for our patient? Well, it decreases the rate of plantar flexion at loading response. It prevents the foot flap during the first rocker of gait. It also increases dorsiflexion in the swing phase. It compensates for the decreased or absent concentric work of the dorsiflexors. Also, what is seen with many of drop foot patients is an increased hip flexion. They will lift the entire leg higher to clear the toes off the ground. With dynamic walk, the patient don't have to do that. It will help the patient to avoid to stumble by achieving a greater toe clearance. Also, the brace is pre-flexed and the calf cuff is positioned at the posterior part of the leg. This promotes knee flexion and works against hyperextension. As well as there are indications when to prescribe dynamic walk, there are also contraindications which we need to look out for. Slowness and specificity can be a contraindication, but it depends on the severity and what triggers the specificity or clonus. It doesn't have to be a contraindication. Mediolateral instability during stance phase can also be a contraindication but sometimes this is solvable by using a foot orthosis with the dynamic walk. The most important contraindication to be aware of is significant quadriceps weakness. As the dynamic walk promotes knee flexion, quadriceps weakness can cause the patient to fall if he or she can't stabilize the knee in stance phase. For custom dynamic walk, we have the same indications as well as contraindications. There is no difference between the custom and the off-the-shelf versions. It is still the same orthosis. Making a custom orthosis is just a way to accommodate for an individual shape of the patient's leg. The dynamic walk series are a series of orthotics for patients with insufficient dorsiflexors. There are several different models and almost all of them are available as off-the-shelf versions as well as custom, which is what we will be talking about today.
The available models for custom dynamic walks are the standard with one peak rod on each side, uh, the double double with two peak rods on each side, or the single sided models with two peak rods on either the medial or the lateral side. The shoe mount is primarily used to get a calf cuff to fit the patient. We've also had a few requests for custom shoe mount with peak rods on both sides. But to produce one of those, we need a cast of the leg with the shoe on the foot. There are two models which are not available as custom. The first one is the modular, which is basically just a foot plate with two peak rods. It is primarily used with a knee orthosis. The main reason we don't offer it as custom is that it's not a big product and we believe there would be little use for it anyway as it's just a custom foot plate. But it's not like we couldn't do it. The other model is the dynamic walk anterior. This is our newest model and it has only been available as an off-the-shelf product in Scandinavia so far. This model is very different from the other models as there is no pre-flexion built into it. This means there will be less lifting force, but also that it can be used for patients with weak quadriceps. This model is also not available to order as custom. You choose the model depending on the need of the patient. Is there perhaps a greater need for stability in a certain direction? Is one-handed bonding important? Or maybe does the patient require an extra lift? The custom option makes it possible to fit the patient with a dynamic walk, even though he or she does not fit into any of the off-the-shelf versions. The function of the dynamic walk is still, however, still the same. The dynamic walk can never be a corrective brace. It is dynamic and it's meant to be so. This is a big advantage as it will mean less restrictions for everyday life. But no, some patients do need more stability and then the dynamic walk is not a good choice for that patient. To be able to make a custom dynamic walk, we always need a base of production. This can be a negative or a positive plastic cast, or a positive foam model. We can't accept digital files as we don't have a carver. The reason we don't have a carver is that we can't fabricate on available foams. In production, we use temperatures of 230 to 240 degrees Celsius under pressure. The foams of today will deform at those temperatures. But if you want to scan, you can. We do accept foam models, but to produce, we will have to make a copy in plaster. Models uh, that you send to us will be stored for six months after delivery of the brace. To get a good function of dynamic walk, there can't be a lot of malalignment. It should always be possible to place the patient in neutral position. If not, there will be a great risk of not achieving a good function, as well as decreased durability. The base of production needs to be positioned in neutral, with the right heel height and the desired toe lift. Toe lift is not super important, however, as this can easily be changed with some boiling water at delivery. The reason why the correct position is so important is because we can't really change much about the model. We can only do minor changes. When I say neutral, I mean neutral in all three planes. We need 90 in the sagittal plane. We need a vertical heel to the shank in the frontal plane. And it should be without rotation in the transverse plane. If the patient can't be positioned in neutral in the dynamic walk. The dynamic walk is probably not the right orthosis for that patient.
The reason why position, uh, positioning of the cast is so important is because we also need to consider fabrication. The peak rods are always prefabricated and cannot be shaped to fit the model. We need to have the right angulation of the peak inserts to mount the orthosis. If we don't, the parts will not fit together. The angulation of the peaks are carefully considered to achieve a good function and a low profile of the orthosis. This is why models which are off neutral creates problems for us, as this complicates the positioning of the peaks. If you consider this as an example, we would have to make a build out on the medial side to achieve the right peak angulation. This will make a very wide foot plate, which will be hard to fit into a regular shoe. But if we would attempt to correct the cast, we wouldn't know how much we could do. Feet like this tend to pronate even more during walking. This would entail a great risk of a brace that the brace might hurt the foot or at least cause the patient a lot of discomfort. This is why cast of neutral don't work for fabrication. What should we do here? Create a foot plate which will not fit the shoe or create a brace which will not fit the patient. What if you do have a malaligned foot? The first thing to consider is if the deformity is flexible or not. If it is flexible, a way to get around this is to take care of the foot alignment with the foot orthosis. It can be an insole or maybe even an SMO. The foot orthosis can correct and stabilize the foot and it can be worn with the denim guac. In that case, the best way is to first make the foot orthosis and cast with the foot orthosis on the foot. You can of course cast without the orthosis on the foot, but then there will be no space, extra space for it in the brace either. As it is not always visible on the model if the cast was made with or without the foot orthosis on, we ask you to tell us if you did. This is because we have to handle models with a foot orthosis on the foot slightly different. And this is why this needs to be clear. To achieve best custom results, most importantly, we need a good position model. You also mark the malleoli and MTP level, and if there are any pressure points or sensitive areas. Make the model five centimeters longer than the height of the finished brace. If it's too short, we will have to lengthen it, which is extra work for us and we might charge for that. If a positive cast is sent, make sure the rebar isn't too short. It should fill to a few centimeters from the end of the toes and should be sticking out more than 10 centimeters above the proximal end. So, uh, we can use a regular plaster cast as a base of production. Either you send us the plaster negative, or if you want to make an individual adjustment of your own, we can also use the plaster positive. We will only make product specific adjustments to the plaster model. We can't change the alignment, so make sure you get a neutral aligned cast. If the cast is too far off from neutral, we will have to reject the cast. Something which can also be important too is to make the cast is not too weak, especially if you use synthetic plaster as they tend to become very weak. If it is weak, reinforce the cast before you send it. Uh, we have also received some 3D printed negatives which have been very weak and very hard to work with. So do check the cast when you finish with it. And please keep in mind, the better the base of production you send us, the better result we can get. The same thing really applies to the positive foam model. We need to receive a neutral aligned model as we can't do anything but minimal adjustments. So before you carve the file, modify the model to neutral position. 
This is how you produce a good positive foam model. First, you scan the patient in the neutral position, or you modify the scan to neutral afterwards. As you usually don't use heel and toe wedges when you scan, modify the foot plate to the correct heel height and if you want a toe lift. This will make sure the foot plate follows the inner shape of the shoe. Carve the model and mark malleoli and MTP level, and if there are any areas sensitive to pressure, and then you send us the foam model. Almost all of our customers use our English order form, including our Swedish customers. You find it on our website, either on the custom Dynamic Walk product or in the library under order forms. The first section on the form is customer details. This information is important to be able to identify you and the order. Sometimes we have questions before we can process the order, and then this information is crucial. To avoid mix-ups, we also ask you to mark everything you ship with the same reference. It's a second line on the order form. This makes it easier for us to identify what base of production goes with what order form. Below the customer details, we have some casting instructions. These are just as a reminder, as we do get a lot of casts which are hard to use for production. Below the casting instructions, we ask for some patient information like age, weight, and activity level. Underneath, you have the checkbox to check if the cast was taken with a foot orthosis on the foot. You also fill out what base of production you are sending. In the next section, you choose what brace model you want, and below, there are some options regarding materials. For the foot plate, you can choose between a standard, rigid, or flexible layout. The most important thing to remember here is that to increase durability of the foot plate, the flexible layup is the best. This is especially important for the high activity users who really need that layup. The rigid alternative is an alternative, of course, but personally, I would choose to have a more rigid shoe and maybe an insole if I needed to distribute plantar pressure more even. For the calf band, you can choose either a standard or a rigid layer, depending on the need of the patient. You can also choose peak thickness. The standard 6 mm peaks is what we use for all of our off-the-shelf products. But for custom, we also offer the 5 mm and 4 mm peaks. Those are primary use for children who weigh less and therefore require less lifting force. The 5 mm is sometimes also used for adults who want less lift. The 4 mm peaks are definitely only used for children, generally not older than 4 or 5. As available standard padding will not fit the custom dynamic wax, we have decided to offer a sheet of padding which you can cut to the desired shape. These sheets come with Velcros to attach the padding and a strap. We also ask for some measurements. It is only a minimum of measurements, and it's important that we get all of them. You can choose to either give us them in inches or in millimeters. You choose, but you need to stay consistent. The most important thing is that the measurements we ask for is what measurements you want the brace to have, not necessarily patient measurements. So for example, the desired length of the foot plate does not have to be the length of the foot of the patient. The height of the orthosis is of course, our, is of course your decision, but generally we recommend it to be around the highest point of the calf this can be important depending on the shape of the calf. The reason for this is the function of dynamic walk. As it is so dynamic, it will move on the leg. 
and if the brace is too high, this can cause problems. The best way to receive a foot plate to fit the shoe is to send us a trace of the inner sole of the shoe. In this way, we can ensure a minimal amount of work for the clinician at the fitting. In this way, we can also optimize the size of the LCP material in the foot plate. For those of you who don't know, the LCP material is the material we put in the foot plate to increase durability. It is similar to the NEMA, and it's hard to achieve nice edges if you grind into it. To give you an exact delivery time is hard because it depends on where you're from. We need 14 working days, approximately three weeks, in-house to produce. To this, you will need to add time for shipping. So depending on where you're shipping from and where we need to ship to, it can differ how long the total time of delivery is. A year ago, we suddenly had a large increase of custom dynamic walk orders and unfortunately, we didn't have enough resources at that time to take care of that, which caused delays. Uh, now we are better prepared for similar situations, but this can of course happen. However, we will always inform you if an order will be delayed. I want to finish this presentation by promoting our new instruction video on how to order a custom dynamic walk. It is available on YouTube and we have a link on our website to it. And now I just want to thank you all for listening and please get in touch if you have any further questions. Thank you very much.